I would now invite Pro Vice Chancellor Igno, Dr. Shrikant Mahapatra, to the podium to present his address. Very good morning, dignitaries in the dais, ladies and gentlemen, and very dear students. At the outset, I must compliment and congratulate the Argus TV channel for igniting all of us to discuss about a very, very sensitive, pertinent topic that is National Education Policy 2020. Yesterday, that is on 29th of July, we have completed two years of implementation of the National Education Policy 2020. And we got this National Education Policy after almost 35 years, 34 years, because last policy was in 1986. And this policy came in the context of the pandemic, which came to us in early part of 2020, and the policy was announced in October 2020. The basic tenets of this policy is to make India a knowledge superpower, to make the country a knowledge society, a knowledge economy, to put the country in the knowledge super highway through equity, quality, affordability, flexibility, Indianization of our education system, internationalization to make India a Vishwaguru, to make substantive improvement in research and to extensively use technology in the teaching learning process. This technology part was much emphasized after the pandemic. That is the chapter 24 of the National Education Policy 2020 was written in the light of the pandemic where the Commission talks about using technology in the teaching learning process. How technology can be used in the teaching learning process in the country like India? Friends, those who are sitting here, they are the digital natives born almost in the 21st century. We, the frontliners, and including people like us sitting in the dais, we are all digital migrants. That means that you are born with technology. We were not born with technology. We have adopted technology. We have learned how to use technology. But you are comfortable with a laptop, a desktop, a smartphone and so on and so forth. And we struggle to learn. As parents, we also learn from our own children how to use technology. So the national education policy is for next 20 years. And the policy is not for us, people like us. It is for you, who are the students, who are the next generation of this country. And it says that in a country like India, where there is a digital divide, where access to technology is limited, almost 50-50, we should have a blended method of teaching and learning. That our traditional face-to-face -face method should be clubbed with technology-oriented teaching and learning. I come from an open university, and we have been using technology from the very beginning, much before the pandemic. There also, we combine face-to-face limited face-to-face -face with extensive use of technology. So what is that technology? Who can afford this technology? When I was interviewed as a Vice-Chancellor by the 
Honorable Governor of Orissa, he asked me, what is your dream of a university? I said, my dream of a university is to run my university from my mobile. The day I can run my university from my mobile, I'll consider myself to be very successful. And believe me or not, you can run your university through a mobile by use of technology. Today, you are all using Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, and all the social media platforms like YouTube. Earlier we thought that these are for our networking, for our friendship, but subsequently you realize that these can be extensively used in the teaching learning process. And you don't have to pay anything. These are all almost free, unless you want to use it for commercial purposes. The digital platforms are also available to the teachers. And many teachers in our country who were using and comfortable with face-to-face -face teaching suddenly came to these digital platforms like Google Meet to contact the students. Initially, during the pandemic, we thought that our first job is to get connected with our students. And when we get connected, we started communication with our students. And when we resumed communication with our students, we started interacting with the students. And during the pandemic, I could expose my students to the best teachers in the world, best teachers available in the country. I was confined to Bhuvaneshwar and Sambalpur, where I had limited resources of teachers. But when you use technology, you can invite any teacher from any part of the world from any part of the country to engage the student in the teaching learning process. So the beauty of technology is that it is accessible, it is universal and it is interactive also. Now in a country like India, can we use the internet only? I have a strong reservation on this. When we say technology, it should be television it should be radio, it should be community radio, along with the network, internet-based technology. And if you see the budget of this year, there are two important decisions that Government of India has taken. One is a digital university in the country, and second is 200 educational channels in India. Earlier there were only 12 channels, from class 1 to class 12. We had only 12 channels. Now there will be 200 TV channels. That means every state will have minimum 12 channels from class 1 to class 12. There will be separate channels for higher education. There will be separate channels for technical education. There will be separate channels for vocational and skill education. So television is coming in a big way in our teaching learning process other than the internet-based technology with which we are almost now familiar. So therefore what is required in this country is we should have a solid technology infrastructure in the country. Our teachers should be well versed with technology in teaching learning process. We should develop excellent content. The students who are sitting here are more comfortable with video content. We as teachers are more comfortable with text content. So there has to be a mixture of video content and text content. There can be discussion forums for interaction, both synchronous and asynchronous. And then the greatest challenge of used technology is assessment and evaluation of the students. Whether it can be center proctored online examination, whether it can be a remote proctored examination so that you can sit at home but you have to be monitored constantly and you appear the examination whether that is possible. So all sorts of debates and discussions are going on and finally next generation of students 
should know that the next generation of technology in the field of artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, machine learning, data analytics, these are internet of things. These are the areas where employment can be generated. They will kill employment. The traditional employment is going to vanish. A new kind of employment will come. And I request all the young generation of learners to get acquainted with the new technology, the technology of the 21st century, so that you will be more relevant for the society and you can contribute meaningfully to make India not only a technology superpower, but a Vishwaguru in the whole world. Thank you very much.